Okay, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. We're, we're going to be taking a look at Windows 8 on Ivy Bridge and, and also on ASUS's Maximus 5G. Now, this is going to be a test. We're going to run, try and run all of the same benchmarks that we would use in our normal testing. In other words, we have your uh, Sysoft Sandra, 3D Mark 11, Media Espresso, all those usual benchmarks, and we're going to see exactly what they do. Um, we also have a full write-up of this. It's going to be, uh, if you just click on the link directly below here, you'll be able to get to there. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're just going to take a look at some of these uh, tests and exactly what we've ran into. One of the first ones that we run is, of course, Sysoft Sandra. This is the light version. The version that we had did not want to install. It also didn't want to run. It kept saying it couldn't contact the server. But you get in here and you can take a look at, uh, you know, your different things. Memory bandwidth was one of them. We saw a decent jump in memory bandwidth. It actually kicked up to... Uh, 18 uh, gigabits per second from the average of you know about 16 and a half 17 that we saw during our testing under Windows 7. Uh, that's a decent jump. Uh, it's not gonna you know something to write home about, but it's not too bad. Um, of course, we're gonna go ahead and stay in here as uh, most of what we want to talk about is gonna be on the desktop. Now, one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at one of the biggest problems we ran into during this particular testing was that we didn't have the drivers that were gonna run everything. As you can see here, we do have. Uh, a, uh, a driver for the 5800 that's in here, that's a 5870 version 2 from ASUS, but it's not the actual driver, it's a beta driver, so it doesn't give us the full ability to run this, and we're not going to get all of the functionality, there's no OpenCL support, there's no driver acceleration for applications such as Media Espresso or anything like that, so a lot of applications are going to fail when you try and run them under this. We saw the same thing when we tried to run the GMA 4000. We pop it up and it says Microsoft Basic Display Adapter. That's all you can get. We tried to run the uh, installers, not only did ones we downloaded from Intel, but also ones from ASUS. These completely failed to install and all they said was the system uh, is, doesn't support this installation. So doesn't meet the minimum requirements was a big one we got. Also audio inputs. It did install the Realtek driver, but we didn't get the overlay like we saw in the Maximus 5G when we ran the full review. Now going ahead and looking down here, we have we, you can see that it's the 3770K. Uh, it's picked that up. Sound, you got the Realtek storage controllers. One of the interesting things is it didn't want to pick up the adapters as storage controllers. We had to get into the, uh, the controllers here. We finally got the Intel controller installed and the AS Media, but we ran into a few uh, bizarre options. For example, when we took our Kingston HyperX USB drive and we plug it into the AS Media ports, it's going to pop up and say this device can perform faster, but in all of the testing that we ran, it runs as a USB 3.0 device. It's getting the 256 uh, megabits per second, 272 when we run it in turbo mode. As a matter of fact, we can go ahead and open up uh, USB 3.0 boost, and well, now it's not showing the device here, but if we pop it over to Intel, so we get that plugged in pop it over into the Intel port, it's going to pop up and you can see we can run in either normal or turbo mode. Now even though the USB 3.0 boost wouldn't see it, it was recognizing it as USB 3.0 and when we ran the, the test we were getting that same speed. Uh, unfortunately we just did not get the same type of uh, you know, performance and the same type of recognition for the basic system driver. So that was one of the problems that we ran into there. We also saw as we mentioned that there was no uh, GMA installation. In 3D Mark 11, when we pulled this up, we had a, had difficulty getting this to run. One of the biggest reasons is if you click over on the More page, well, actually under Help, you have to uncheck Scan System Info. System Info will not work. It will hang everything up, and eventually it will lock up the uh, the system. So that's a big uh, deal for you to remember to go ahead and kill System Info. Same thing in PC Mark. We had an issue uh, right here. We tried to run the No System Info tag. It, uh, that's not an option anymore. So you got to remove that. And of course when you run it, you want to go ahead and click on help and again remove the scan system info. HyperPi worked without a problem, but we ran into a problem here. Now you can see we have a 5870 which is supported by Media Espresso to run. It should pick this up, but it says it doesn't meet the needs of this program. We could not get it to run until we pulled out the card and we ran it under the uh, GMA 4000. When we did that, we were seeing times that were 14 minutes and up. That's kind of a problem, and uh, we actually should be seeing about half that. So you're not going to get any hardware acceleration. It's not going to bring any of that up. 
So moving on, we're going to take a look at, uh, we're going to go back to the front here. And we'll show you one of the problems we ran into with applications like Cinebench. Actually, let's go back here. Uh, when you go to run Cinebench, you get a library load failure. It's just not finding something. We've tried multiple solutions to try and get around this, but it's just not bringing it up. So if we go back, and we'll look at uh, LightWave, LightWave 3D. This is usually a re really reliable program. We ran the installer under administrator, Windows 7 mode. We even got down deep into the installation modules and uh, changed the settings for each of those for compatibility to run in Windows 7 mode and also as administrator. And we just didn't get what we needed for these. Another thing we ran into was with our um, some of our games. We actually had to go in and make sure that the program ran as an administrator or it couldn't write the save game and the in-game files to the user profile. We had this uh, problem with not only Call of Duty, we also had it with Crisis and Far Cry 2. All of them needed to be run as administrator or they didn't run properly. Now we've shown you uh, some video of these as well as Far Cry. Um, all of the games run pretty much the same way with the exception of Far Cry 2. Uh, they all ran a little bit slower than what we expected. Um, again, in direct comparison, and you can see that in our write-up that we have down below. Um, that's going to pull you to our site, and you can see all of our thoughts on that. Again, we can't say this enough right now. Uh, we've seen a couple of comments that, oh, wait, you know, wait for Ivy Bridge until Windows 8 is out. Looking at what we've got here, we can see that the drivers are just not there. Windows 8 has a little bit of a different driver model than Windows 7. You can get some drivers to work with this, but those drivers are not going to perform at their best. Um, we were able to plug in a USB device using the AS Media USB 3.0 drivers, but it's not fully recognizing it as USB 3.0 in the system, and we're seeing issues with that. We're also seeing issues with the AS Media SATA 3 controller, where we're not getting the same performance. Where we should be getting about 450 megabits per second, we're only seeing about 390. Even though we're using the same driver that came on the disk that comes with the uh, Maximus 5G. We've also gone and pulled out some drivers from different sites to download the most um, you know, capable driver. In other words, ones that are said, okay, this one will work with Windows 8. So it took us a little bit to just to get the drivers that we have here. And of course, the drivers that we're using for our 5870 are ones that we downloaded directly from AMD's website. So again, you can see that we have some of the features enabled. Some of them are working, but we also are not getting everything that we should and that's not unexpected at this stage of the game. However, in about two months, Microsoft is going to be releasing a full-blown preview, uh, the second preview of Windows 8 in preparation for the launch later this year. We hope that that preview is a little bit more up-to-date. Some of the issues that we've run into in the past and in our uh, ex you know, coverage of Windows 8 have been taken care of, and we also hope to see some of the manufacturers some additional manufacturers begin to release Windows 8 drivers that will kind of bring this together. At the stage we're at right now, you know, the system just isn't there. We got a little bit more memory efficiency, the power draw is going to be the same, uh, the heat levels are going to be the same, and the performance seems to have taken a little bit of a step back on some of this. But again, those are all just immature drivers or drivers that are not fully compliant with Windows 8. So again, as always, if you like this video, go ahead and click on the like button. Be sure to share with your friends and make sure you subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.